president, Richard Nixon, reflected back on his mistakes in office right here in 1988. One of eight presidents who have appeared during or after their years in the Oval Office. In the autumn of your years, as you are reflective about your own life's experiences, personal and as a politician, what criticism do you have with your own behavior or style or things that you've done? As president. As president or as a human being? Well, we don't have much time to cover the, the human being. <laughs> Let's start with the president. Uh, first, naturally, the Watergate matter should have been handled properly. Uh, I should have concentrated on it. And apart from the fact that it was wrong, it was stupid. And generally, I, I'm called many things, but uh, not often am I called stupid. The country has gone through, in the last uh, year, year and a half, some very difficult times. Uh, we went through the problems of Watergate. We have uh, been suffering from a very serious economic uh, recession, although we're coming out of it very steadily. Uh, we've had uh, a traumatic experience uh, in Southeast Asia. All of these and perhaps some other problems uh, raise some doubts in the American people as to whether their government, uh, their form of government, was uh, capable of meeting these kind of challenges. This doubt, I think, has been considerably reversed. And I think that's extremely encouraging. Uh, they know that, uh, that honesty and candor has been restored in government. Mr. President, assuming the Soviets do not pull out of Afghanistan anytime soon, do you favor the U.S. participating in the Moscow Olympics? And if not, what are the alternatives? No, neither I nor the American people would support the sending of an American team to uh, Moscow with Soviet invasion troops in Afghanistan. I've sent a message today to the United States Olympic Committee spelling out my own position that unless the Soviets withdraw their troops within a month from Afghanistan, that the Olympic Games be moved from Moscow to an alternate site or multiple sites or postponed or canceled. Do you think we do a good job? Have we been fair to you? On balance, yes. I think, um, first of all, I don't think there's ever been a president of either party in any philosophy that didn't think that uh, he should have gotten a better press. So that just goes with the territory. I think there have been rather dramatic changes in press coverage over the last uh, 20 years, uh, particularly in the, ca in the Washington press, which which bears some examination and evaluation by those of you who are in the press. But I don't think that the president gets anywhere by making any comments on the press. Do you believe if you had gone to the Congress and said he should be removed because he's a threat to his people, but I'm not sure he has weapons of mass destruction, Congress would authorize war? I went to Congress with the same intelligence, the Congress saw the same intelligence I had. Uh, and they looked at exactly what I looked at. And they made an informed judgment based upon the information that I had. The same information, by the way, that my predecessor had. And, and, and all of us, you know, made this judgment that Saddam Hussein uh, needed to be removed. In light of not finding the weapons of mass destruction, do you believe the war in Iraq is a war of choice or a war of necessity? Uh, I think it's a, that's an interesting question. Please uh, uh, elaborate on that a little bit. A war of choice or a war of necessity? I mean, it's a war of necessity. We, 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 my judgment, we had no choice when we look at the intelligence I looked at that says the man was a threat. President Bush, what did you learn in your government's response to the tsunami, to the disaster response to Katrina? What lessons did you learn that this administration should bear in mind? Uh, first of all, it takes time to get the supplies in place. But that, that, that shouldn't deter them. In other words, there, there's an expectation uh, amongst people that things are going to happen quickly. And, and sometimes it's hard to make things happen. Why does it take a disaster of this scale and magnitude away from the United States to create this kind of bipartisanship? Well, I think that when something like this happens inside the United States, we act in the same way. I, I think that it reminds us of our common humanity. It reminds us of needs that go beyond fleeting disagreements that um, whatever our policy disputes are don't seem to matter much when people are dying. You got to go to Syria yeah. in some form or another. You've ruled out boots on the ground. Uh, 
and I'm curious, have you only ruled them out simply for domestic political reasons, or is there another reason you've ruled out American boots on the ground? Because your own, your own guys have said you can't defeat ISIS with airstrikes alone. Well, they're absolutely right about that. But you also cannot, over the long term or even the medium term, deal with this problem by having the United States serially occupy various countries all around the Middle East. We don't have the resources. It puts enormous strains on our military. And at some point we leave and then uh, things blow up again. Well, that's so the we've, Iraq. So, so we've got to have a more sustainable strategy, which means the boots on the ground have to be Iraqi. What about the boots Syria? on the And in Syria, the boots on the ground have to be Syrian. And you were always hard on Obama. You thought he wasn't enough of a cheerleader. He was not a cheerleader. Um, if you could have one do-over as president, what would it be? Well, it would be personnel. Uh, I would it? say if I had one do-over, it would be I would not have appointed Jeff Sessions to be attorney general. Thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Follow today's top stories and breaking news by downloading the NBC News app.